I just wanted to show you a fun little project that I just finished up making a uh, fingerboard for resawing stock and using this K1 um, you can see the print quality is not really that great there and I had about 300 hours on it I had my first issue with the printer um, actually I had a nozzle plug I was using some Sun Lu um, filament cheap Sun Lu last time and it seemed to cause problems with the nozzle and plugged it up and that's what I wound up with. So first one was a failure. I um, clean, cleaned out the plug. I actually put a new nozzle in and went back to printing and started printing all over again. And actually I found out that there were some changes I should have looked into. Um, you can see I've got some over extruding on there but the part came out good anyway. Uh, real solid. It's all five walls thick and um, came out perfectly square and straight, but a little bit of over extruding. I should have adjusted the flow rate when I changed the nozzle. That's something that I know now and I'll do that the next time, but I, I kept playing with the flow rate until I started getting, you know, better parts out of it. And there you see some knobs that I printed and this uh this tool is completely 3D printed. All the parts on it were done on this Creality K1, and it's just been a wonderful machine. I've been having so much fun with this thing. And I even printed a little wrench there. You can see these are my fingers for putting pressure on the stock. I ran into a problem with them. They're a little bit too stiff in my shop up in the house where it's warmer. They're fine, but the shop is about 55 degrees now from that heat pump water heater, and that has a uh, caused them to stiffen up but I did uh, laser cut some washers and rubber gaskets on the P2 and you can see I printed some more knobs there and my favorite part is this little wrench I printed for fun and uh, some extra washers that I made and then I used the um, X-Tool P2 to cut some gaskets there you can see that's all laser cut there. It comes out beautiful. It stinks when you're cutting it, but it comes out beautiful. And then there's the main base of the unit. So this is just a prototype for fun, you know, just to see what I could do with this uh, 3D printing and how strong I could get it. And actually it turned out good. I do have to modify those fingers. But, oh yeah, one thing I took, and I took those flathead screws out of the going make T-square and put button heads in there, tightened it up square, and now I'm just going to pin it out in my shop when I get a chance. So let's see, first thing I do is put this, uh, this is a no-slip pad I decided to cut for the bottom of it. And again, you can see how beautiful that cut. Um, it does smell for a couple days after you cut it, though. For some reason, the, the rubber holds like a, just the a fumes in it or something. But it goes away, and, uh, you know, it's fine after that, but... CO2 laser cuts this stuff beautifully. Now I'm just going to self-adhesive, so I'm just going to put it on there. I figured I'll give it a little extra grip so I don't have to tighten things so tight. And then the top part goes on there for taller stock. And let's put this together. Put the other half together first and make sure everything fit perfect. And here you can see again... Um, Everything came out perfect. I love that Alibre uh, design program. It just, uh, you know, gives me all the models I need to 3D print it. And then I also get the drawing views for, like, cutting the gaskets and stuff, too. So, you know, it, it just takes care of everything for me. I've been real happy with it. And you can see this went together perfect. And I made individual fingers so I could play with the thickness of them, the spacing of them, and stuff like that to get it right. And, um, you know, I, I right there, you... I'll show you in a second. I didn't quite get it right, but um, if it was warmer, they'd work perfect. But I made them three, three walls thick, and I'm going to print a two-wall one next, and I'm also going to uh, maybe try to mold some rubber ones. We'll see. But uh, basically, that's what it looks like. Just a bunch of fingers that put pressure on the stock to keep it up against the fence on the bandsaw when you're resawing. And I resaw a lot of thin lumber for the laser project, so you know, that's why I went through this. And then for taller boards, the top goes on there, and those knobs screw it together. Um, I did play with tapping the PLA itself, and worked fine. Got really strong threads, and I'm you know I'm real happy the way that came out with the M8s. 
took threads nice and I think it's because I want everything on this is five walls th thick with like a 50% infill so you know it's it's heavy and it's strong and it's really nice and then my wrench I made that up because sometimes I get cramps in my hands and I can't grab onto little things and tighten them and stuff like that where this will help me actually it's more like a toy for the most 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 of the time but when you need it you need it and that fits the uh, T-slot knobs down below, too. I made them all the same pattern on the outside. Really fun making your own knobs and threading them and stuff like that. I had a good time doing it. And I decided to use the T-slots. like I, These are from that Going Make uh, Thin Rip Jig. But I, I tried them out first. I said, okay, let me go out in the shop and make a couple. So I had some aluminum stock, and I machined out a couple uh, M6 thread. Had some M6 studs, 100 millimeters, longer than what I needed, but I just super glued them into the uh, threads. And you can see that's, you know, that's what I use. Super glued them into the threads I put in the aluminum block, and I'm going to go back and just cut them to the length I need. Figured that's the easiest way. So I'm just going to use that rotary tool with a cutoff wheel. It seems to make the least mess, and easiest to use for me so I got them shortened down and just kind of you know ground the end a little bit to get to make the thread easier to start and everything's all done time to, to try it out and I've got a piece of cherry I'm gonna resaw on here for laser projects so it goes in place uh, the tights down nice um, not the moods with that anti-slip piece on the bottom there and stuff. And got, I can only put a little bit of pressure because it's a tremendous amount of force right now. So I'm going to have to work on thinning down the fingers a little bit. But it's definitely uh, fits light, nice and does put pressure on the board. And let's see, even if you raise, I'm going to raise that top guide up and show you when I do thicker boards. Um, I can put this on, but I have to work on a, a higher fence for the back too. But you can see that I'll just screw right in place there, and then I can go up to about, you know, 12 inch thick boards, no problem. And they screw right in there, those knobs. Everything's really solid. I'm pretty amazed how strong this print came out. So, you know, there is some over extruding on the, on the thing, and I did get that worked out now, so um, I'm happy with it. You know, that was my fault. But you learn, you know, that's, you, you learn from your mistakes. And I had to put a clamp back there to keep that from moving with the extra pressure from the fingerboards. It would kind of flex, which it always did anyway when you're trying to um, push on it with a, a pusher. So I started resawing this board, and actually it works good. Um, worked really good until I started getting to that other end of the board there where it's actually uh, thinner, and I didn't have enough... Um, flexing those fingers to make it to the thinner section so right about there you're going to see it start swinging out from the fence a little bit there it is it's um it's out just a little bit but that's my own fault i'll get the fingers worked out and this thing will work perfect i think so you know by having constant pressure on it see you get a nice smooth cut without a lot of teeth in it teeth marks in it um, easy enough to take out with the thickness sander. When you're trying to do it by hand, you get a lot more teeth marks in it. So, you know, having something like this really helps. But you can see where that board started getting thinner. It's, um, it just didn't have enough flex. But I can fix that easily. So let's do another slice. Try taking another cut and... Feed it in and actually... Works pretty good at holding it against the stock, except for this board. I should have flattened it, but um, I got a slight warp in here, so I'm going to have a section of the board that's probably a little bit thin. But and then I'm just going to go back and cut that last one, just take a little slice off of it, and that's where it kind of bowed out while I was cutting it. There, you saw that, but. Everything worked, um, did a good job. Just have to work a little bit on these fingers and it'll be perfect, I think. I really uh, think it's gonna work out good, I like it. 
and all ready to just run through the thickness sander. So, you know, that's why I've been using a lot of thin stock for the lasers, and uh, this is an easy way to get it. And having this little wrench here is just like being a kid with one of those little um, workbench tool sets that you get when you're young, and you've got all these little things threaded and wrenches, the plastic wrenches to use. Such fun, fun little thing. So that's it. Uh, works works good. Um, pretty good. Needs a little more flex in the fingers, which I can fix easily. But just wanted to show you, um, you know how it works. And um, I've been having big trouble with these uh, ceramic guides on this Laguna band saw. So I'm going to replace them with some Carter guides soon. I think they loosen themselves up whenever you resaw. You just can't get them tight enough. But anyhow, I just thought I'd you know show you how I worked through this and how I was able to 3D print everything and. Um, He's, uh, this is my favorite toy now, this 3D printer. It's kind of like fun to just be able to dream something and then make it and, uh, you know, have it done in a couple of days. Anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you and maybe give you some ideas. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.